Hi folks, welcome to Harris Acres and Heart of the Home. We left the farm today and my guest today is my buddy, Miss Lucy Van Doren, who spent your life in the food industry, didn't yes, you? You were a dietitian for years and now and she catering. and I, yes, and catering, and she and I spend our life traveling. And I understand you've had a little heart trouble. Yes, very much so. And what happened to your heart? Oh, I left it in Alaska. Oh no, well we're gonna have to go back to Alaska and get your heart. Right. I told Lucy before I took her to Alaska that when you go to Alaska, there's the only problem I see with it is every time you come home, you leave part of your heart. Yes. So now Mama Lucy left part of her heart in Homer, Alaska. But guys, we're going back in a few weeks to get it or to leave more of our heart. You know, this makes my fifth trip. That means, am I heartless now? <gasps> no, <laughs> I'm not heartless. One thing we did learn about Alaska Great people, mm, yeah. great scenery, the most beautiful eagles in the world, True. some of the greatest restaurants in the world, and some of the worst restaurants <laughs> in the world. Yeah. So it's like everywhere else, guys. Pick your special places, learn to go back and enjoy them, and then learn to go to your cabin that has a killer view of a volcano and make your own chowder. There you so go. today we're going to share my chowder recipe with you. We had um, dinner one night and we loved the chowder. Mm -hmm. We had lunch the next day and we didn't like it. No. It was too thin and it wasn't as good as we were used to. The potatoes so, wasn't even done. No, no. Mm -hmm. So today, guys, I'm going to share a simple, simple recipe with you. The ingredients for my recipe are eight new potatoes, two large cans of evaporated milk, 10 tiny carrots, mm -hmm. four cups of Mayfield milk, right. and guys, I must tell you, I traveled <laughs> to Alaska with Mayfield milk on the plane with me, Northwest Airlines. She's telling the truth. I'm telling the truth. She took is. my Mayfield milk with me. I do not travel without Mayfield milk. One half stick of butter, one teaspoon of Creole seasoning, and today we're going to use halibut. Now, in Alaska, we made salmon chowder because mm -hmm. we caught a 17-pound mm -hmm. king salmon. We ate it, guys. It's gone. So today we're going to share some of the halibut with you. And um, then we're going to use sourdough bread to dip into our chowder. And this is a simple, simple recipe. We went back to the cabin in, what, a couple of hours? Right. Yeah, we let it simmer right. for a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. And then that night we had guests show up who lived in Alaska. We also made them a peach cobbler. And, and then biscuits. And biscuits. And they offered me a job because they said they would build me a restaurant if I'd make peach cobbler in Alaska. Right. So uh, we had a great time. We had a great time. And honestly, you can tell people about it. You can share your stories with them. You can share mm -hmm. your pictures. But if you can do it, guys, book yourselves a ticket yes. and go to Alaska. Right. Use whatever time you have. I only had three and a half days. You got to stay, what, five days? Five days. I stayed three and a half. That was pretty tough. Mm -hmm. And I, I must admit, it whipped me because when I came home, it took me two and a half days to adjust back to our time mm -hmm. because we found ourselves at four o'clock in the morning fishing. There's, you know, four hours a night and you just can't get used right. to it. It was pretty tough. It was pretty tough. It kicked me. Mm -hmm. It kicked me. And it took me a couple of days to adjust, but well worth the trip. And I would do it again right. over and over and over. It's a long flight. But it's a beautiful flight too. It is. It is. It is. It right. is awesome. It is awesome. Now we're gonna uh, make our chowder. We've already. You've got the potatoes cooking right. with the, the onions. onions. Yes, mm -hmm. and we started that boiling in water. And now I want you to chop me some halibut. And now, Lucy, what is mm. this knife called that we bought in Alaska? Do you know, I really can't remember. Is it an ulu? Ulu. Ulu. Right. Ulu. Thank you. Yes, and the Eskimos use this for everything. And folks, I promise you, when I showed up in Alaska making biscuits with Mayfield milk, I think some of the people that were there having dinner with us thought it was a little weird that I brought my own milk. But I'm used to Mayfield, and when you get used to it, there's no substitution. There is no substitution. Now this halibut was caught where it cooks inlet cooks, out in the Pacific. Cooks inlet, and I was fishing, yes. but I didn't catch this yes, one. Yes, yes. I, yep. did, I did catch some scars and bruises. Yes, you did. You fell in the boat, I didn't did, you? I did, I <laughs> did. That was so funny. It wasn't funny, but it was funny. It was you, funny. You gotta be there, guys. But um, one of the things that we loved about Alaska, everybody's laid back. You don't wear makeup. Half the time, you don't brush your hair, do you, Lucy? <laughs> no. Because you're out on the boat and the wind is tearing you right. up and people don't care, you know? It's really a laid back place. And um, the folks are so nice. We met people from Minnesota. We met people from Michigan. 
And everybody had the same story. We said, what brought you to Alaska? And they said, my husband made a trip. He absolutely loved it, and he brought me back. And that's exactly why I went there. My husband made a trip. He took me back, and he was so right. It is so, so beautiful. All right. So if you do have a chance, take advantage of it and, and share Alaska with your family. Um, it, it is awesome. It is awesome. Now, you can add that to the chowder, mm -hmm. and then we're going to add a couple of cans of pet milk, and we're going to add our Mayfield milk. Let me get the Mayfield milk ready. And you can use 2%, or you know, there's a new product out Mayfield has, Nutrish, that is awesome. No fat, and it's real, or a little fat if it has any, but it's really good. Really good. There's nothing quite like it. Okay, you wanna add the milk? Okay, Lizzie, you've added the Mayfield milk. Nice. We've got our Creole seasoning in there, our butter, mm -hmm. our fish, our potatoes, carrots, and onions. Mm -hmm. And we boil them till tender right. and then started adding our other ingredients. Now you're going to add some pet milk, mm -hmm. canned milk, any kind of evaporated milk you want to use right. um, is fine. And, and simmer it. And we're going to simmer it slowly a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. And then close to being done, we're going to thicken it with a little bit of flour mm -hmm. and cold water. And you know that trick about using flour and cold right. water so it doesn't get... It won't, it won't in make it. dumplings. No, it won't make dumplings. We don't want dumplings. We want chowder. Right. And we want it to be thick because right. one of the restaurants we ate in, the chowder was too thin. Mm -hmm. So um, go ahead and add your pet milk to that. Okay. And guys, remember this recipe is something, we did it with salmon. We're going to do it with halibut today. You can do it with just potatoes. You can do it with oysters. But it is a really quick and simple recipe. And it's the kind of thing, I think we can make a big pot of this and invite neighbors and then have a spinach salad that we're going to make when we come back. The spinach salad is going to be simple. It won't take long and pretty good dinner. Right. Pretty good dinner. We're and, going to have... And healthy. Healthy, exactly. Right. We're going to have the vitamins from the spinach and, and we're going to have the fish, which potatoes. is brain food. Right. And honey, at our age, we need all the brain food we can get. Anybody who leaves their heart in Alaska. We forgot it. We forgot our heart. Right. But we're going to go back and get it right. or leave more of it when we exactly. travel. Now, we'll be back in just a little bit, guys. Hang on just one minute. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Miss Lucy, healthy meal. Yes. Our chowder's cooking. And we're going to make a salad. Now, do you like spinach? I love spinach. I love spinach. Yes. I love spinach. Very I healthy. am hooked on spinach. I like it cooked. I like it raw. I really like spinach. And we found shopping in Alaska was very expensive, wasn't it? Fresh vegetables. Especially eggs. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, I paid $1.79 for a Vidalia onion there. So, honey, if that won't make you appreciate coming back to Georgia grocery prices, go buy the Blue Star and hug those people because White Lily flour wasn't even in ex existence there. And the flour we found was $4.97 for five pounds, remember? Mm -hmm. And I thought, yes. whoa, that is a little pricey. But fresh vegetables were expensive. So when we came home, we appreciated what we found here. Right. Today we're going to make a spinach salad that's going to have spinach, strawberries, raspberries, which are really great antioxidants, broccoli, red onions, and little spring onions on the side. This is a kind of a Georgia tradition, mm -hmm. isn't it? When you yes. have soup beans or when you have a salad, you have a little spring onion on the side. And for color and, and good for you, the only thing pricey about this meal these little bad boys were $2.97 a piece mm -hmm. for a red bell pepper. But they look good and they taste good, so we're going to splurge a little bit. Now our salad is going to have a secret dressing that's really no secret. I had dinner at Corks and Crumbs in Ella J and had a great dinner. And when I finished dinner, I called them over and I said, please give me your recipe for that salad dressing. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. She laughed and she said, honey, go to the grocery store, walk down the salad dressing <laughs> aisle and buy wishbone raspberry dressing. And I did. It is so good. It is so good. So this is a wishbone raspberry vinaigrette. And I'm going to actually pour this over the raspberries and let them kind of marinate while we're chopping and um, while we're doing this, the chowder is cooking, and I think we're going to have a really good lunch. What do you think? I think it's going to be beautiful and good. Right, right. And you keep telling me presentation, presentation, right. presentation. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah, you learned a lot in catering, and you know, we catered our daughter's weddings, and I learned a lot about that. Mm -hmm. You don't do that. You call a caterer. Well, I used to do that, but <laughs> I got out of it. It's uh, a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. So remember, guys, this salad has color, has great, great, great food value mm -hmm. to it because it has spinach, broccoli, onions, fresh raspberries, fresh strawberries, the onions, and this wonderful dressing. What, what's the little saying we found out there? A bunch of single women went to Alaska. Woo. And people found out they needed to tell us something. In Alaska, the odds of men to women are 10 to 1. But there's a saying, girls, and remember this if you travel to Alaska. Right. The odds are good, but the goods are odd. I think that is odd. <laughs> But nice, nice people. Right. We met some great people. Of course, I said, I think the reason J.S. liked it, it's a lot like Alabama. It's real laid back. It's real laid back. Nobody gets in a hurry. True. And, and I found out in Homer, the day they put in the red light, some of the fishermen got upset about it. The red light, guys. Did you hear what I said? <laughs> the red light. One red light. And I'm glad it was there because I almost got run over crossing that little thing right. down at the spit. So um, really and truly... Alaska is a trip everybody needs to make. And so many people tell me, I've always wanted to go there. There's no excuse for not going. Mm -hmm. You know, um, book your ticket in advance and try to find a bargain ticket, which is tough right now. But um, do it, and I'll tell you, I've been there June, I've been there in July, and I've been there September. It's really, really crowded in July. It's really nice in September, and it's very nice in June. Mm -hmm. And we chose right. to go there June the 10th right. to celebrate J.S. is what would have been his 64th birthday. Right. And um, when I saw the Kenai River for the last time, uh, uh, that was tough. <laughs> that was tough. But I'm going back because now I've got enough frequent flyer miles for a free ticket. So I'm so excited. And that's how I got mine. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. And and the fun and, and, and just the hanging out and, and chilling because right. that is a place to chill. You just it enjoy is. the beauty. Right. And, and we're going to share some photos with you of eagles we took and moose. Do you remember the mama moose yes. with the two babies? Yes. Oh, man, it was awesome. And um, bear, y'all saw bear. I saw bears. I didn't see any bear, but y'all did. Yes, did. And uh, I saw more moose this trip than I've ever seen right. before. Right. So um, I've never seen so many eagles in my oh, life. Oh, the eagles are unbelievable. Uh, they are. And, and if you think that won't put you in touch with God, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you literally, you sit there and you're like, wow, this is awesome. This is awesome. And you know, when we had dinner at Land's End. And the End, snow mountains, too. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. That's what I was going to say. When we were sitting at Land's End Restaurant mm -hmm. eating, the food was good. The scenery was better. The scenery was better because you were surrounded by snow-capped mountains in June. True. In June. And and the folks are so nice. You know, everybody we dealt with, the chef there shared a recipe with us yeah. that we're going to share right. on a later show. Sure did. So um, everybody was nice. And, and I said it's kind of like they say, welcome to Alaska. And um, kind of like us when we say welcome to Harris Acres and welcome to yeah. Harris Farm. True. And we want folks to come back every week. So... Um, we do a lot of simple, simple recipes, and we do things that your family will eat, right. and things that you have in the pantry, and things that you can go to Alaska and bring back with you. We brought back 200 pounds of filleted halibut, right. so that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Um, Angela caught the biggest fish. Yeah. She did. 45 pounds. 45 right. pounds, and she reeled it in herself. Right. So um, we're going to have our chowder and our salad in just a little bit. The chowder's got to simmer a little bit. And we're going to add our raspberries to the salad, and we're going to let them kind of drizzle on it and sit while we wait for the chowder to get done. And then I'm going to have, I think Angela stopped by to share a, an arrangement she made with me. I challenged her on another show about a broken butter dish. Mm -hmm. And she's going to be here in just a second, and we're going to share that challenge with you. Oh, okay. So while the raspberries coat the broccoli and the spinach. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back, guys. You stay tuned now. Welcome back, folks. Mm -hmm. I've been joined by my daughter, Angela Burgess, who happened to be in the Alaska trip with me. Yes. Yay. And you actually caught dinner today uh -huh. and you got me a cookbook while we were in Alaska. Mm -hmm. And your captain gave us a recipe we're going to do later called what is it, Poor Man's Lobster? Poor Man's Lobster. Poor Man's mm -hmm. Lobster. So that'll be a recipe we'll share with folks later. Right. That's something to look forward to because he promised us it was really good, yeah. didn't he? And yeah. so simple. Two yes. ingredients. Yes. We love so simple, don't Two we? Two ingredients. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and Alaska is simple, isn't it? 
It's a simple lifestyle. It's beautiful. It's fresh, fresh, clean air and the most beautiful scenery in the whole wide world right. I've ever seen. And we're moving. Right. We're moving. We landed at Hartsfield and immediately my allergies clicked yep. in. Mm -hmm. None of us could breathe. And we looked at each other and said, we willingly got on a right. flight back to right. this when we left that pristine, it's clear so air. so beautiful. Yes. Mm. And it, it's funny, it's foggy at times, very foggy. Right. Mm -hmm. And then in... And cold? Oh yeah. my gosh, it's cold. And it felt so good. <laughs> it felt so good. Yeah. It felt so good. Except when you were fishing, you got drowned. Eight foot right. waves over the boat. Right. Yeah. Got bruises. Yeah. Arms, legs, yeah. bruised yeah. up. But, but the captain fine. said you were a trooper. He said you did a great job. And he so. thought I was funny because, <laughs> little story, I was pulling in the 45 pound fish and he was stripping my line which is the correct way to say it. But I was so excited. I said, he's pulling my stuff, Captain Don. And he said, you must be so much fun to be around. <laughs> because nobody says he's pulling my stuff. <laughs> they say he's stripping my line. <laughs> but, you know. Well, you walked in a store and somebody said, are Alabama? you from Alabama? <laughs> And we, you know. said, next no, door. Next day over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We like Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> it was funny. And, and it was... Warm and welcome, wasn't it? Everybody, Everybody. is so friendly and so yeah. outgoing. And uh, yeah. one of the boys that was with us, he said, how do you know all this information from people? And I said, just open your mouth and talk. Yes. Number one, they make fun of me because they like that I'm Southern and they let me talk more and they say <laughs> talk more. But if I just kept on talking, they kept on giving me information. Right. So it was wonderful. And you know, it is funny, but Alaska people have Northern accents. But yes. when you talk to them, they're from Minnesota or Michigan right. or right. Washington state or Oregon so mm -hmm. they, they started out mm -hmm. in cold weather and then the smart ones from Georgia and Alabama went up there right. so you know we have a lot of friends who live there mm -hmm. and and JS and I went up one trip and and we were headed up to Willow Alaska and he had been to our friend's house and I said sugar do you think you'll remember how to get there he said I think so well we rounded the corner on um, there are three three main roads in Alaska one two and three we go around the corner, and I said, I bet that's where they live. He said, why do you think that? I said, honey, the yard's full of junk. They're from Alabama. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was the house guys. That yep. was the house guys. These people are true troopers. They moved up there 25 years ago. He's 80 years old now. Mm -hmm. And they make the trip May 15th. They drive up. And then September 15th, they drive back to Alabama. They still spend their winters here. Mm -hmm. But... Um, an awesome place to visit or an awesome place to move to. So yeah. you want to move, sounds yeah. like a plan. And like 50% of the people I met were there because they moved there. And out of those 50%, I would say 35% of those people said we came on vacation and we never left. Exactly. So it, it has exactly. such a tremendous effect on people. We were right. crying when we left and it was just, it was oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah, it, it is it is a beautiful place. And, and we did get some great recipes, guys. And I shared- A lot of fish. A lot of fish. When I was there, I shared our Habitat cookbook with the folks in Alaska and they loved it. Cause I did make a peach cobbler while we were there. Mm -hmm. And we shared it with some of the construction workers who immediately said, lady, you need to move to mm -hmm. Alaska. So so, um, but we did go there and share our Habitat cookbook, and we left a heart of the home apron there mm -hmm. and um, left part of but ourselves. One thing us Southern women need to go up there and teach them sweet tea. Sweet tea. Because oh, yeah. you order sweet tea and they think you're foreign. <laughs> And you don't speak their language. <laughs> exactly. There's no sweet tea. Exactly, exactly. But now you and I talked about this a couple of weeks ago, and I gave you a challenge. Mm -hmm. You took my great grandmother Gilreath's broken butter dish. It was broken during the tornado in '93. Mm -hmm. And what did you do to it? Well, um, it was really, really, really simple. Um, I took the the bowl, I glued a piece of styrofoam in there, and the broken part was the lid. So mm -hmm. when I built my foam up, all I did was I sat the broken V on top of the foam to camouflage it and just built the flowers around it. And there you have it. You can still pull it apart. And, and the piece that was broken out of the lid, I've got underneath everything. So we, we still have all the pieces together right. in case we ever try to fix it. Right. Uh, it's there. And, and you it's said hidden. it was so simple. I could have done it. God, <laughs> I couldn't have done that. It really was Now, you fast. probably can because Angela teaches floral sometimes, and you've given some kids some classes, and they have done a great job. And the they, ones they that pay listen, attention. they do good. Right, yes. right. The ones that don't, they do their own thing. <laughs> that's right, that's right. And that's okay. I like your mama. 
I do do my own thing. You know, I may be an Alaska woman because they're kind of pioneers, and yeah. I'm a little bit of a pioneer. Some of them are just rough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we love the idea of no makeup, no washing your hair. I know, no, no. Go to Alaska women because you don't have to shave, and they don't care if your hair is brushed or not. Because you're out on a boat all day. <laughs> you're on a boat, you're in the wind, you wear these little hats, so yeah. you stay warm yeah. and you don't have to shave. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Save on those Mach 3 razors, buy you something good. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> so much fun. Right. And, and we laughed about luggage, but when we went, mm -hmm. I told everybody, y'all packed too heavy. I took three suitcases and I wore three outfits <laughs> because everywhere we stayed had a washer and dryer. So, yeah. duh, you yeah. know. Which Don't is good. Don't pack heavy. Save Especially if you go out and you find a fisherman that has a Dutch Harbor jacket, which is what I did, and yeah. I'm such an addict to deadliest catch. I go up to this fisherman and I'm like, I want the jacket. Here's the cash. And he laughs and he laughs and he says, okay, lady, here's the cash. <laughs> so I take that jacket home and he's like, I fished in it all day. And I said, I got a washer. <laughs> that's right. Take washer and dryer. That's my, that's my biggest prize. We're going to have our salad and our soup. We've given you the recipes. They're simple, simple guys. It's something you can put together in just a minute and you're going to love it. And remember, um, what is our new saying? Don't plan your life, live, live your, life. your life. Live your life. In Alaska. In Alaska. <laughs> Take time to live your life, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.